Good morning to all. speak only practical things not going to tell on theory what we have to do what we have to practice from morning everyone is saying about quality 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 from where it will come who has to give for us there is a question mark is it not we have to realize that quality is in our hands we have to get it we have to mold ourselves to get the quality, to lift the quality in nursing standards. Uh, Surgical nursing. We have a key, part, key role for nurses to lift up quality standards. Quality care is safe, effective and patient-centered when we really practice. Safety with healthcare quality it indicates how nurses have very key role. Quality care is safe, effective, safe. What's up? Sravan? You are man? surgical treatment, then immediately we have to think of our plan, what we have to do, what care we have to plan for the preoperatively, then it will start from there. So we have to introduce the patient and we have to ask, we have to interview the patient, what for you came, we have to ask the problems, why he admitted, for what procedure, we have to go through all the history, then we have to confirm from the surgeon for which surgery he has admitted. Complete preoperative preparation. It will start care from that time onwards. So it includes NBM. NBM status, part preparation, skin preparation and investigations. What all surgeon has written. Everything has to complete one day before itself. Ensure informed consent. What it indicates? Whether patient is having complete information. What is the benefits? What is the complications? What surgery he is going? What he understood? It indicates for us, patient understood everything about the surgery. We have to make sure. Then, any blood transfusions patient require, we have to take consent. We have to explain for the patient that we are going to give. If required, we are going to give blood transfusion. Your HP is so and so. So, we may require. For that, we require your consent. Then prevent post-op infections. How we are going to prevent these things? By our total hygiene care. We have to give one day before itself from total care to the patient. Then it will come antibiotic part. First we have to make sure that patient hygiene, antibiotic. Then ensure pre-op education. It gives lot of effect on the patient pre-op post-operatively. When you educate preoperatively that you are going to for this surgery. After surgery you will have pain. You have to cooperate. And, and one more thing, when you have pain you have to tell we will give medication. And it will reduce all these things we have to give preoperatively. Then breathing exercises. What he, he has to do after the surgery. How he will cope up from if any lung infections and all those things. And most important thing, ambulation. Early ambulation is very important. Most of the lab cases, they will fill gases. So it has to get rid by early ambulation. Otherwise, patient will have other complications like abdominal distension, pain, discomfort, all those things will start. So pre-op education is more important. Check any allergies. Most of the time, we will forget this. But it is more important. If patient have any penicillin or some other allergy, it will affect when you administer any antibiotic or any, any drug, everything. What allergy, what, on which he have allergy, we have to document. Ensure to complete pre-op checklist. This is most important. If you do all other things, everything will cover in checklist. Not only make it tick. If you do only, you have to make sure that we have completed, make it tick. Without doing just for documentation purpose, don't make it checklist. Ensure safe transport to OT on call. Whenever 
body will call to the concerned wall. We have to keep patient ready and send it to the body. In this phase, everybody, everybody will thinking now, I think these are all routine we are doing. But we have a beauty at continental. In this phase, OT nurse will come down to one day before, before night, she will come down to the patient area. She will meet the concerned patient, she will introduce herself and she will explain what surgery is going on. She will ask any concern from his side. Everything is all right. Whether surgeon is explained to him or not, when, from when he has to keep his fasting, all investigations, everything she will check. Of course, what knows is have a great role. Apart from that, supervisor and OT nurse will take confirmation before one night. Next day, patient will be ready to wheel to OT. At OT pre-operating area, and one more thing here, OT nurse will accompany the patient from concerned ward to the OT. Everywhere, only housekeeping. After shifting the patient to the OT, nurse will come with the, all the documents. Here, not like that. Patient will be ready. Before night, OT nurse will confirm everything. Next day morning, when we are ready to take the patient to the OT, OT nurse will come down. She will wheel the patient to the OT. So it is very great helpful to the surgical time because all the information she will gather from the concerned nurse, from everything she knows. So we no need to depend on concerned ward nurse to tell this and to blame that nurse, she didn't tell, we she forget, all those things we don't have here because we are very clear. Once patient is willing to from ward to the OT, patient is fit for to take surgery. Again, this is second confirmation. Already before, before night, OT nurse and ward nurse confirmed the patient, identified everything over. Next day morning, when OT nurse accompany the patient to the pre-op area, again she will give hand over to the pre-op area nurse. Identify the patient by name and CHID. Ensure all documents and pre-op checklist. Again, we have here two checklists. What level we have, ward nurse will do and hand over to the OT nurse. Again, OT nurse will confirm with all the investigations, report, documents, everything she will confirm. And we have a one more privilege here. Our lovely CHL chairman sir, given privilege to the nurses, everything on the soft copy. So everyone can see all the things in the system itself. No need to call the nurse, call the ward and find out all those things. So pre-op holding area nurse will open the system on that patient particular ID number she will open and she will see the all the things and she will ensure and sh then she will document the pre-op checklist. Ensure proper handover with all documents. Then especially for ortho and neuro cases we have to see x-rays, MRIs, everything is there or not. Then ensure informed consent. We have accept informed consent everything in the system. Only consent from we have hard copy. So we have to make sure that patient, doctor, everybody has signed or not. Ensure site marking. This is whichever case is applicable, like T-care patients and mastectomy patients, ophthalmology cases, we have to ensure the site marking by primary surgeon. Confirm any allergies. Again, second more, second time, we are confirming at the pre-op area level. Then, ensure prophylactic antibiotic. When patient will to the OT pre-op area, then and there we will put the IV cannula and we will give antibiotic which are recommended by the surgeons. It takes one hour to take inside the OD and prepare for the surgery, it will take one hour. So as per NIBH and JCA guidelines, we have to give prophylactic antibiotic one hour before. Inform, provide psychological support. This is more important. Patient will from what to OT. So maybe patient will be, most of the time, he will be in tension. He will think that they are taking to the OT. That time fear will start. So we have to guide them. So nothing will be happen, we are there. We have to ensure, we have to assure him. Oh, we will take, nothing will happen, don't get any tension. Inform surgery duration to relatives. Relatives at the same time, like patient relatives also more tension. How long it will take, what will happen? Relative is taking inside, so we have to guide them. It will take one hour, two hours, we have to tell them. It will take anesthesia part, half an hour, surgery part, two hours, exact time. In between, we have to give information to the relatives. Surgery is going on, everything is 
correct everything is fine don't get tension so we have to tell them to sit in waiting room we have to guide them this is our beautiful ot complex this is ot with well advanced technology equipment here one more thing i want to stress patient nurses are accompanying from the ward level to the ot from ot to inside the ot everywhere only nurses will handle the patient nurses only will wheel the patient to the inside the ot this is i think before sir has uh, told about surgical safety checklist this we are practicing according to the who and jci through who and this i am going to just briefly tell about this after taking patient inside this is must we have to see the patient whether patient is correct correct site and cut surgery by making time out time out we have to tell in front of surgeon anesthetist nurse scrub nurse and circulating nurse before anesthesia when patient is awake then just i will show see king inside patient is key division parts before induction and before skin incision and debriefing this is after surgery i items on the checklist that are not applicable uh, to the procedure being performed are not required to be completed if patient is if patient is refusing we have to document briefing at continental we are prac what we are practicing i am going to tell at minimum requires presence presence of anesthesiologist nursing staff and surgeon performed before induction of anesthesia performed with patient when patient is awake this is before giving anesthesia and verbal confirmation with the patient we have to introduce to the patient inside the ot last and final confirmation with the patient that you know who is going to operate and what surgery is and which doctor is operating we have to confirm from the patient then consent for surgery again that circulating nurse has to check once more type of procedure plan and site this is most important after going taking the inside also we have to check once more whether site is marked or not and circulating nurse has to check any allergies before going to give skin incision because during surgery so many medications and all those things they will give equipment equipment we have to check before wheeling the patient inside the ward ot see all the technician technician nurse and anesthetist has to check anesthesia machine lights bar um, suction operators everything we have to check before starting the anesthesia this when we won't do time out patient is asking whether i am in part of surgery or not so we should not do this before anesthesia we have to ask anesthetist whether you have any concerns giving putting tube and all these all part of surgical safety checklist we have to fill with without asking should not fill the surgical safety checklist this is not only for documentation purpose purpose and it is for patient safety as well as our safety also see nurse is doing time out in front of surgeon anesthetist scrub nurse everyone she is confirming all these things i already covered after time out that is the time to start the incision before that we have to if surgeon is hurry to start the surgery also we have rights to stop the surgeon sir please stop i have not done time out so this is most important thing at that level also we can prevent the error then not in in during surgery we have a very important role that is to count the needles swabs and instruments we have to end of the surgery before surgery we have to count in front of circulating nurse and scrub nurse together has to count the swabs instruments and needles we have to document on that then swabs during surgery again we have to take one more count and tell the 
Sternos, my count is this. One swab is missing from my count. Where it is? We have to ask. End of the surgery, again we have to remain the surgery, sir. Wait a minute, I am checking my count. If anything goes wrong, we have to stop the surgeon. Please wait, sir. I have to search and confirm it. Once you confirm only, then we have to allow him to the close the surgery. After the surgery, patient will be to the post-operative area in safety. It includes patient should have side rails and always nurse, anesthetist and technician. Everybody should accompany the patient to the pre pre inside OT to post-op area. Circulating nurse has to give proper handout to the post-op nurse. Otherwise, she doesn't know anything what surgery patient underwent and what anesthesia patient got. Depends of anesthesia, patient recovery will, will be taking time. So, once patient is wheeled to the recovery room, we have to orient the patient. We have to tell him, Sir, surgery over. You are all right. You are in post-op area. We have to inform the relatives and we have to tell the patient that you can speak to your relatives. We have to inform. Continuous monitoring. First, first one hour we have to monitor the patient. Every 15 minutes we have to check the vitals, intake, output chart, everything. In that peak hour, that is the most important hour, anything goes wrong in within one hour. We have to put keen observation. We have to see the pain management. We have to ask patient, you are comfortable, position, everything we have to take care. Then care of drains, this is more important. Patient is in semi-conscious, he doesn't know what he is having. So we have to care the drains, we have to properly secure the so if patient is having on police catheter, we have to secure properly and if any drains, we have to take care. Temperature, we have to see. Most important thing, patient is underwent any abdominal surgery and those things we have to see the surgical site. Any bleeding is there, dressing is appropriate, it is whether it is wet or dry. Breathing exercises, once patient is cope up, we have to tell him, sir, you can take deep breaths and you have to come out from the pain, you will get faster recovery. Early ambulation, we have to encourage, sir, sir, you have to do the early ambulation. It is, it gives more effect to you, you can go soon to the home. We have to encourage him to come down from the bed. Then, if patient is everything okay, he is recovery, fully recovery, we can inform the surgeon and anesthetist when they say patient can discharge, then we have to plan for the discharge. Most of the things, surgical quality, everything depends on this. Cleaning of what is. This we have to take care. This is everyone's responsibility, not only manager or supervisor, every staff responsibility to clean the OTs after each case. We have to clean thoroughly, then only we have to take the next patient. No hurry in that. We should not compromise on the cleaning. Floor cleaning, surface cleaning, everything we have to watch it, then only we have to take next patient. And apart from daily, each patient, in between each patient cleaning, weekly cleaning is very, very important. We have to, that only one day we have to put for thorough cleaning. We have to see all the equipment has to go disinfectant, all the theaters has to wash thoroughly, including roof, surface, lights, everything. Everything has to clean weekly once. What all we are practicing at Continental, what all we implemented, we can see in the results. This is evidence-based. What we have, within two years, we completed more than 3,000 3, surgeries with elective surgical site infection rate is 0%. And artery burns, 0.03%, only one patient we have. For that, we implemented, we, we found the cause where it be lacking, we implemented that and one needle stick injury and one more two adverse drug reactions we have so we uh, we found the cause where we are lack we implemented that overall what i want to tell to put up quality standards we have to practice all these things more important is communication we have to talk we have to give proper hand over each other we should not blame this is more important. Standing operative procedure. Every organization have their own SOPs. We have to follow. Regularly we have to review that. And for each and every procedure there is a 
policies and procedures. Strictly we have to follow that. We have to educate junior nurses to see that and thorough with that we have to put in practice. Effective professional skills. This is most important. This we have to come from within us. Nobody will give this. We should have fashion about learning. We should not think that we don't know. Always we have to come forward and learn. Checklist. This is most most important for nurses to prevent most of the errors. If you follow checklist, you will be thorough with the thorough with your care. Quality is an optimal balance between possibilities realized and a framework of norms and values. This is true or not? Yes. Thank you.